So I'm going to try this again, giving this lesson for today. We are dealing with complex sentences and subordinate clauses. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you're reading the directions. So a complex sentence has a main clause, which those are going to be your independent clauses, and one or more subordinate clauses. Those are going to be your dependent clauses. A main clause is a subject and a predicate, and it can stand alone as a sentence. So that's a big thing to remember that it can stand alone as a sentence. A subordinate clause has a subject and a predicate, but it cannot stand alone as a sentence. It depends, which makes it a dependent clause, it depends on the main clause to complete its meaning. It can act as an adjective, adverb, or a noun. So remember in DGP we have our subordinate clauses and our relative pronouns. Those start dependent clauses. Okay, so look at this. We have a relative pronoun, subordinated conjunction, a relative pronoun. Those are going to start your dependent clauses, your subordinate clauses. All right, so today's assignment for exercise one is dealing with uh, writing simple or complex on the line um, to identify the types of the sentence. So we're just figuring out if it's a complex sentence or simple sentence. So we're looking for verbs and clauses and subjects. So it is Groundhog Day and it's celebrated all over the country. So it is going to be a subject is, take note of this. This is very, very important to remember. That whenever you see is, it's going to be a verb 100% of the time. It's either going to be a linking verb like it is here when it's by itself, or it's going to be a helping verb when it's attached to an action like it is over here, is celebrated. So we've got another verb. Um, but we only have one subject. So in that case, we have a simple sentence because this is our subject and it is Groundhog Day and it is also celebrated. So we have two, uh, two verbs and only one subject. So this is one independent clause. But let's look at number two. It says the groundhog, which is actually a woodchuck, emerges from hibernation on that day. So I have is right here, but then I also have another verb emerges. So I have the groundhog emerging but then I also have this relative pronoun in the middle with its own verb. Okay, so that one would actually be a complex sentence. Now if you take a look at number three, I'm gonna pay attention to these commas. Commas are gonna signal different pieces of the sentence. Um, sometimes they signal your, in, your clauses, sometimes they signal phrases, but it's a good, good, good idea to pay attention to those commas. So here, automatically, I see a subordinating conjunction. And if I pay attention, remember subordinating conjunctions can start clauses, uh, dependent clauses. So if I have a dependent clause, it's if the groundhog sees, there will be, there's my other verb. So I've got for sure two clauses here, which means it's a complex sentence. I don't have to determine which clause is which or anything like that yet. I just need to determine, is it a simple sentence or is it a complex? Complex sentence. Here's another subordinated conjunction. And if groundhog sees its shadow, there's it, does what, returns. So I've got another subject and another verb. So how many clauses? We have two, which makes it a complex sentence. Um, remember that this stuff's not graded. This is what I'm looking for, but this is how you think it out and how you make your answer correct. All right, moving on to exercise two. Um, we're going to underline each main clause and we're going to write simple or complex in the blank. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did on exercise one, only this time we are going to underline the main clause. We have to determine which clause is, is there. Um, so this makes it a member of the squirrel family. So we have this makes, so we have a subject and a verb, it a member. We don't have any other subjects or verbs. So if I only have one clause, it is going to be the main clause and it's gonna be, that was an ugly S, but it's gonna be a simple sentence. All right, now let's look adult groundhogs. So groundhogs, no subject, are usually, so are, the verb are, is a verb 100% of the time also. Um, either by itself, like it is here as a linking verb, or are running, are jumping, like that as a helping verb. Subject verb, and oh, I got a comma including their bushy tails, 
don't really have a verb there, but I've got a relative pronoun, which are, so this is about bushy tail, so I know I have two clauses at least somewhere, and this is really the only one that makes sense by itself. So I'm going to underline that main clause there and put my complex in its marker there. Um, so let's look at number three. They have crossed coarse brownish gray fur with hints of red. It's they have, and I don't see any more. So if I only have one, the whole thing is my main clause, and it's as simple as I need. Now I'm looking at the next one. The groundhogs live in the eastern and central United States where there are open fields. There's an R, so that's a verb, but live is also a verb, so I have subject verb, and then there's an RP, so I have another subject verb. Now I have to figure out, okay, which clause can stand by itself. Can I say groundhogs live in the eastern and central United States? Well, that makes sense by itself. Or where there are open fields? Mm, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense by itself, so I'm going to go with this one as my main clause. All right, so on here, I am looking to score the underlines and this side. All right, hopefully that video helps.